views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Get fired up for Spirit Fire Radio with your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Get ready to shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in these modern times. Bring purpose to your life through practical spirituality and add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Now, here are your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Hello, listeners. It is great to be with you. Thank you for tuning in to Spirit Fire Radio. I'm joined by my co-host, Dr. Dorothy Riddle. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Steve. <laughs> I almost did a, here's Dorothy. <laughs> I could hear it in my voice. <laughs> great to be with you again. I look forward to continuing our discussion, like tuning in, right? Radio. We're talking about intuition, which just... Uh, Talks it speaks about radio, right? Being tuned in, tapped in, turned on, huh? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about critical thinking and its relationship to intuition. You know, at, at at first glance, one would think intuition and critical thinking they're opposite ends of the stick, right? They 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 couldn't be more different. You're either using your mind to think critically, or you are being intuitive. That it's almost left brain, right brain, but not so much. They work with each other and uh, they actually are quite dependent on each other. So we're going to explore that for this entire show. Dorothy, how about a quote? I know you've got a quote. Oh, I've got three of them this time. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. So the first one is from William Butler Yeats. And he wrote, people who lean on logic and philosophy and rational exp- exposition end by starving the best part of the mind, by which he means the intuition. Mm. And then here's uh, Carlos Castaneda. Uh, Conclusions arrived at through reasoning have very little or no influence in altering the course of our lives. Which reminds me of the quote from last week about the the rational mind being the servant of the intuition. Mm, right. And then from uh, Jonas Salk, intuition will tell the thinking mind where to look ne- next, which I think is, is interesting. It's related very much to some of the Einstein quotes that, that uh, we've shared, that the intuition is, a, is critical in uh, charting a path for possibilities, opening us up to new ways of uh, experiencing and thinking. Yeah, and you know we've 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 talked about the moral compass quite a bit, but I, there's a compass. It it reminds me. I, I sometimes get this feeling inside, this intuitive feeling that mm-hmm. that there's a, there's it's in a sense a compass. You know, the intuition can lead us just he, mm-hmm. as that quote says, you know, we'll tell the mind where to look next, that the intuition is something we can rely upon in the same way, or, or it would be wonderful if we could exercise it in a way that we can rely upon it, that, that allows the thinking mind to navigate us where it is that we'd like or need to go or what's mm-hmm. perhaps in our best interest if we use it in that way. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just take, let's just pause for a moment and, and, you know, reflect on what critical thinking is all about, because as you said at the beginning, it can seem like it's contradictory to talk about intuition and critical thinking in one breath, but uh, critical thinking is that disciplined thinking that, uh, or self-directed thinking that examines all possibilities and helps us build an accurate and usable database of, uh, of information or of, or of data. And I put it that way because 
the intuition draws on that database, that foundation, and it's it's the use of critical thinking is what provides quality input is the way I think about it. Yes. Um, if we don't have critical thinking, then we're just open to anything, you know, in, any idea, uh, often very much influenced by our own uh, emotional state uh, or our wanting to look good to other people or our wanting to be uh, receive adulation from others and and so we accumulate a lot of data that really is not factually based and um, is quite distorted and then <laughs> the distortion continues on into the intuitive well it's sort of like I hear what you're saying is it's sort of like just a wide open door you know that you said open says me and what comes in comes in Mm -hmm. But there's an aspect to critical thinking that I have really in, you know, really come to understand. And I, I want to make sure the listeners really understand this, uh, this aspect that, that critical thinking is really a process, right, Dorothy? I mean, please feel free to jump in and add to this mm -hmm. because I have witnessed your critical thinking in, in, in action. And it's, it's, it, it is really, uh, you know, it's, really it is a dynamic process i mean i've witnessed it in myself but i so appreciate it it's so lovely to 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 collaborate actually with you who who is who is quite um you know uh has a facility with critical thinking so i really want our listeners to understand this because it's it's really an applied effort right in thought it's really taking you know so many different ways of thinking like reasoning and pondering contemplating assessing considering alternate viewpoints so in a sense critical thinking is is sort of responsive it's not just data entry right That's right there's almost a there's an activity to it um there really is applied effort is what i'm getting at right mm -hmm. and it relates to that the whole month that we talked about discernment Yes. Right. It's being able to uh, to perceive accurately and uh, and wisely, you know what is happening. And there is, you know, you you mentioned the moral compass at the very beginning. There is very much of an ethical context to it, um, so that we it, it's like. Um, making sure that we're not just filling ourselves up with junk food, you know, that we're, yes. that we're eating nutritionally. Well, it's the same thing in the mental field, that we're not just filling our, our mental field up with junk, which is then the only thing that the intuition has to draw on, but that we are actually uh, being discerning and careful in the, the data that we take in and how we evaluate it and, and, how we link it to other things. And all of this goes on as a foundation for the operation of the intuition. Yes, yes. Well, and not to, not to keep circling back, but I just want to once again have the listeners ponder this because it's so fascinating that the moral compass, when if you do research on critical thinking, you will see that there really is this idea of solutions you know, solutions to complex problems. And it really does have to do in a, in almost a very esoteric way to creating a better world because it says that people will just inherently default to their own sort of selfish tendencies, to inaccuracy, to lazy thinking, to just quick conclusions. And that critical thinking actually is, ex is expansive in nature and that when we exercise it, we really, in our own way, we are creating a better world, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a fascinating aspect to that. And then you can see as we relate, as you say that it, it helps with intuition or it is, it, is, it, is, it is a necessary ingredient with intuition, that intuition is really based on the spiritual path or has its, it is, uh, has its place on the spiritual path because it really is about um, – our own evolution, not our own personal evolution, but human evolution, because we are a complex problem and we're always trying to, we're always trying to create solutions to this complex problem. And 
You know, I just today, Dorothy, I, I just saw there was a, they, they were talking about the Paul Manafort and, and here in America, you know, this whole trial and them being on house arrest. And his lawyers basically said, and this is a quote from, from one of his lawyers. When we look at this case, Manafort, who's, you know, is, is, um, uh, is up for money laundering and embezzling. When we look at this case, it's a failure. We see it as a failure to file some forms. Now that is such simplistic thinking. <laughs> Scott, like a failure to file some forms. This is like it. It. It's almost. I mean, the height of of the laws this guy's would break to 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 reduce it to that, where we can all relate to. Hey, I haven't. There's times I haven't filed some forms. Let this guy right. off. It, Big deal. It's a trivialization. It's a trivialization. And it's not uh, have, wanting you to think critically. It's wanting you to just dumb it down and come to a conclusion to generalize it. And it's actually manipulating you away from using your intuition and away from critical thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think that that whole term of, of uh, dumbing down is, is really an important piece of why critical thinking is important in relation to intuition. Because yeah. if we dumb it down too much, there's, there's nothing left to intuit, right? It's just, uh, and we're just, we're just robots. Just like, we just become yeah. robots, which, and you understand how easily then we become programmed. So it's, it's really about being the fullest version of yourself that you possibly can be by putting mm -hmm. in the effort, using your mind, allowing yourself, you know, to tap into that intuition. Dorothy, our first break, we got to go to a break that we're uh, okay. Lock ticking. We'll be right back. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. Tune into the wisdom of your soul for guidance on living a joyful life. On Soul Wisdom Radio, Wendy will provide inspiration to raise your vibration and connect with your higher self and guides. Learn how to balance your ego and to progress spiritually on Soul Wisdom Radio with Wendy Rose Williams. Visit wendyrosewilliams.com or Transformation Talk Radio to learn more about a healing session with Wendy and her events and publications. Now you can be a part of one of the most powerful programs to help create a more joyful, loving, abundant, and peaceful world. Every day at 12 noon in any time zone, join millions of other people around the world to spend a few minutes in joy, love, and gratitude. Brought to you by Robert Schoenfeld, host of the Art of Powerful Living Radio. Together, we can raise the vibration of the planet. For more information, visit globalmomentofjoy.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Be you plus live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. 
Tune in the first and third Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. Welcome back after the break, listeners, to Spirit Fire Radio. Dorothy, we've got so much fun stuff to talk about, but let's just say a few words about our organizations. How about if I start a little bit about Spirit Fire? Excellent. So Spirit Fire Radio is a collaboration between the School for Esoteric Studies and Spirit Fire. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about Spirit Fire, which is an educational nonprofit. We we educate people on the importance of consciousness and incorporating spirituality into one's everyday life. And we do that through our meditation practice called the practice of living awareness. It's online. It's free. We're about to begin a brand new round in January. We do that three times a year. It's a 14 week online program. Uh, we've got a retreat center in Western Massachusetts where we teach classes, uh, lead retreats on meditation and online classes. And we couldn't be more thrilled with Spirit Fire Radio and this collaboration with the School for Esoteric Studies. Dorothy, a bit about... And the school, the yeah. school for Esoteric Studies is also an educational nonprofit. Our focus is on uh, esoteric discipleship training, helping people who have a spiritual practice and want to deepen it. And uh, we do that through uh, meditation study, and service. You can find out more about that at esotericstudies.net. But I want to mention also that this collaboration with Spirit Fire, which we are so pleased to be involved in, uh, actually was a, an outgrowth of our deciding a couple of years ago that we as an organization wanted to collaborate consciously with other like-minded organizations because we found that all too often um, organizations that were focused uh, uh, on spiritual activities uh, just worked in isolation from each other. So we've reached out to a range of organizations, and this uh, is one piece of our collaboration with Spirit Fire, and we're absolutely delighted. If you belong to an organization and are interested in collaborating with the School for Esoteric Studies, you will find more information about that initiative on our website, which again is at esotericstudies.net. Beautiful. Did I mention spiritfire.com? I'm not sure, but I did it again. (laughs) Yes. And you know, Dorothy, I love again that you mentioned uh, meditation study and service because uh, it's interesting how they, how those three things seem to come up almost every month. Right. And you can see Mm -hmm. in critical thinking that meditation is an aspect of it. We talked about that last week in terms of what can interfere and ways to um, to sort of dissipate that interference um, in meditation, a wonderful way. And service, you know, when we're in service, we realize that we're a part of something much greater than ourselves. And through that, in a way, one aspect of that is really recognizing our interconnectedness and actually seeing patterns and understanding really our own purpose and the purpose of this thing called life. It really so much is revealed through service and study is, you know, the critical mind and critical thinking. So it's just interesting how every month it relates, right? Those three, that mm-hmm. three-legged stool that both of our organizations rely on so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So critical thinking, let's, let's, uh, let's, we were talking a bit about, about fake news. And I know you, you, in the break, you had just a few words to say about that. And I think it's important to actually continue that because that conversation, because it, it really is, is something, you know, this, this idea of distraction in the news and we get bombarded with so much, you almost feel like there's a scheme going on here. (laughs) Right, right. I was mentioning in the break that that I had been uh, listening to a news program that was highlighting some uh, some news reporting from uh, uh, Fox and Friends and other similar channels that were reporting as true. Uh, information and data that was 
patently false, that is, is provably false or has been proven false. And yet there was no context provided for people to think it through on their own, to ask questions. And when we're dealing with the intuition, the, the intuition uh, doesn't operate in isolation. Um, it, is, it does draw on the energetic field that we are all part of, but it uses the faculties that we have developed. And if we have not developed uh, the, the critical faculties of asking important questions, of looking at issues from all sides, uh, gathering as much different information as possible, then the data banks that we have to draw on are not filled with accurate, unbiased data. And the, this whole uh, emphasis on fake news, on, on uh, dismissing and denigrating things that are reported or said uh, just because you don't agree with them, just because it's not the way you want to view the world, I think is is very dangerous and there's a there there's a it seems to be a growing or just maybe it's just more pu- being made more pu- public uh, a, a growing sense that there actually is not anything that is legitimately known uh that you know we see this in the uh the way in which experts are talked about like experts on climate change, just being dismissed because that's not a convenient way to think about the world or the economy. Uh, And I find that very dangerous. To me, it's important that I am aware of uh, data, whether I'm comfortable with it or not, whether I like it or not. Uh, But if it is an accurate reflection of part of reality, I need to know it. Well, the word convenience stands out in what you were saying, right? Because if something's inconvenient, it just means, Mm -hmm. oh, I have to effort or I have to Mm -hmm. put time into this. You know, that's Mm -hmm. so inconvenient to me because, uh, you know, I've got this data. I'm just going to sit with that. You know, (laughs) it Mm -hmm. doesn't line up and I'm going to have to figure out how what you're saying and what I know, how they relate. And that's convenient. We've just gotten well, lazy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, I just wanted to interject one thing, Steve, that uh, I, I'm not saying that there's, there are no issues with this, because certainly the French, uh, some French have some issues with this, but I find it fascinating that the French president has offered substantive yes. grants yes. to U.S. climate change scientists to come and do research in France, uh, and recognizing that in order for us to break through to new ways of nourishing our world, uh, that you, you have to have the time and space and support to be able to do that. That's the intuitive process that, that needs to be nurtured. Uh, and here in the, uh, in the U.S., we have a president and a cabinet that uh, do not want to value that. Uh, the United States is now the only nation in the world that is not uh, part of a global understanding of what needs to happen. And so I, I think it's just really interesting to have another nation step forward and say, okay, there's a whole lot of people there that can be helpful and they have knowledge that can be useful and instead of having it just be discarded or overlooked come to france yeah yeah well it 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 does again bring up this idea of of um that critical thinking is 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 really it really is related to a skill And an understanding that your thoughts create beliefs and those beliefs affect the world. That's right. You know, it's as if we've almost forgotten that. (laughs) 
mm-hmm. you know, that, that it's, we've got to develop processing skills. You know, we've got to understand that our, our, our thoughts generate ideas and uh, I mean, generate beliefs and, and that we, we've got to be able to sort of take a look at the bigger picture and, and develop actually these skills. And, and the right. critical thinking is really a part of that. It has got to do with that. You know, we just want to sort of write it off as, as being something that that's not necessary, but you know, well, and not, not all data is equal. Yeah. Not, yeah. not all. Yeah. And that seems to be something that's, uh, that some people are, tr- are trying to put forward is that, you know, wh- whatever I think, whatever I want to write on my blog, whatever I want to tweet uh, is as valid as or as true as anything else, and that's simply not true. And that's where the critical thinking uh, faculty comes in in enhancing the potential for the intuition to function. Yes, yes. Wowie zowie, Dorothy. There is so much information out there. You know, that's something I think I feel like we're just going to have to. Um, it's like a sort of a reckoning is how much data and information there is out there for us to sort through. And as you say, that is when we will need to really rely on our intuition and on critical thinking is mm-hmm. to really assess not only our own inner truth, but where does the truth lie within mm-hmm. all of this information? And again, back to moral compass with, and what is, what is, what serves us all best? You know, being mm-hmm. able to see where it doesn't serve us or where it's only self-serving or only serving another and uh, mm-hmm. all very important aspects of it. We're, we're at another break, Dorothy. So we uh, will be back after these messages and continue our conversation on intuition and critical thinking. Winning at the game of money. Lynn Brown is now offering Full Spectrum Finance, a progressive 12-month program that will help you to navigate through the mechanics of financial expansion. Finally, a financial planner who looks at the full spectrum of money and abundance, engage you in the mental, physical, and energetic aspects of finance. This is Full Spectrum Finance. Are you ready to get into it? For more information, go to fullspectrumfinance.com. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Set your intention for 2018 at Spirit Fire's annual New Year's Meditation Retreat. Find yourself at the peaceful Berkshire Mountains of Western Massachusetts this January for a weekend of meditation, amazing food, and planning. Planning to have the most exciting year ever. Visit upcoming events at spiritfire.com for more info. Happy meditating! spirituality into your everyday lives on Universe Soul Heart Radio. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Kathleen Johnson explores the concept of sensible spirituality, keeping you grounded, connected, and centered on the path to wholeness. Kathleen has dedicated her life to facilitating holistic healing and wholeness in others. Listen to Universe Soul Heart Radio and learn how to flourish, grow, and impact all we do on planet Earth. For more information, go to universesoulheart.net. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit glennarice.com. 
Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to corneliastephanie.com. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. We're talking about critical thinking. And you know, we said right at the beginning of the show that critical thinking and intuition seem to be on opposite sides of the stick, of sort of the consciousness stick. And we've been talking about the ways that they're in, in, interdependent, but there's also ways, right, Dorothy, that, that actually critical can, thinking can interfere, right? There's a time and a place for both. So we've got to know how to sort of when each one is appropriate and how to use them best, right? That's true. But I'm going to interject just right now. Uh, I'd like to share a, a story about critical thinking enhancing intuition oh, before we get okay. into that. Is that okay with you, Steve? That's totally great. You okay. had an intuition. <laughs> I had an intuition, that's right. Um, I just wanted to share with the audience, I, there was a time in my life when I was teaching graduate statistics, and uh, when you teach basic statistics at the graduate level, you are teaching to the people that have avoided math and statistics as long as possible. So basically, you've got a math-phobic class uh, or a statistics-phobic class and so in addition to me, in addition to uh, just teaching the, the rudiments of statistics, I also wanted to help the class understand how statistics could be helpful to them and how it could be misinterpreted, you know, how it could be distorted, because this is, it, it's a way of teaching critical thinking. So what I did was I had each class period, one or two students uh, were assigned to bring in an article from a newspaper or a magazine that had a, a statistical uh, statement, whether it was numbers or just something like the majority of or whatever it was. And then they needed to explain to the class how you could evaluate that and see whether or not that was actually an accurate statement. Uh -huh. So what I was trying to do was to, to help them develop that critical faculty of, of not just accepting something because it's told to them, but to actually evaluate it for themselves. And to me, Steve, that's related to the functioning of the intuition because it's like uh, we need to have a clean database, a staticless database, instead of having all of this, these inaccuracies and assumptions and, and uh, personal desires of, you know, how we're seeing all muddled in. Uh, and so that to me was just an example of how critical thinking can help then enhance intuition. Well, I also hear that the process is so important because they're just also creating new neural pathways, right? I mean, they're mm -hmm. they're really just taking something that they would assume to be uh, to be correct, and and even if it is correct, they're mm -hmm. expanding upon it, you know, and they're actually sussing it out or teasing it out and making more sense of it and drawing their own conclusions, reasoning. Again, it's that whole idea of sort of considering. Right. And you, you find then that you're creating these new neural pathways. And when we talk about patterns, well, patterns are what? They're just pathways. You know, they're just ways in which cycles of pathways are repeated. So um, uh, that's a wonderful exercise. I can see how that would be uh, very helpful. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, I think it's important, you know, when we think about how critical thinking interferes with intuition – to me, in part, it is a matter of how we place value. You know, if we value the intuition and we value critical thinking, the two will complement and enhance each other. 
But if we think that critical thinking is more important than, which was a lot of the Newtonian physics focus, uh, right. and if we believe that the that reality is objective and it is static and it is based on cause and effect so that we can always predict it, then we undermine uh, our intuition because our intuition, if you think about it, our I mean, our intuition is tapping in to our energetic reality. Well, our energetic reality, we know, is probabilistic. It's not cause and effect. It is process. Yeah. It's not static product. And so we, the, the critical thinking allows us to tap in in a way that is rigorous, which seems like a contradiction, but uh, in, in a way that is, uh, will ultimately take us to where we need to go. But if we think that critical thinking is more important than intuition. It will undermine that process. Well, and I also sort of, I would, I would say linear, you know, not to confuse linear thinking with critical thinking, right? It, and mm -hmm. because critical thinking has to do with that activity. I think of, I think a bit of, of, um, of, of a merry-go-round, <laughs> like, running at a merry-go-round, you know, I'm going to get on the merry-go-round and you're just going to run at it and jump on. It's like you, you, there's that, if you've ever jumped on a moving merry-go-round, it's better to run with it. And all of a sudden the right moment will arise when you feel, ah, oh, now's the time to jump on, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's a moment where you, you know what you're going for and you kind of can size up the whole situation but there's a moment where you've got to let that go and you've got to just trust in a feeling and jump, you know, or allow be the in the flow to arise, right. To, mm -hmm. to be in the movement and in the flow of, of, of the field, you know, of the field of the merry mm -hmm. to enter it. I'll often see uh, my partner who uh, loves data and loves statistics. I'll often see him sit with three or four spreadsheets in front of him and he's just staring at them. And I just think, that looks like torture. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather do, uh, I would rather, uh, you know, uh, scrape my head on a <laughs> cement wall than do, no, I'm kidding. But I'm fascinated. And, 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 you know, over the years and years, I watch him do this. And I realize that although I think he's looking at numbers and he's looking at rows and he's, you know, doing math, he's not. He's actually looking for patterns. And he's mm -hmm. actually, as much as I relate that to this very sort of focused endeavor, it's actually not at all. It's actually quite the sort of um, spacious endeavor because mm -hmm. he's allowing patterns to arise. He's actually using his intuition. Although, you know, he and they're working they're working together but at that time i can see that he's actually not thinking critically he's not processing numbers and seeing how they relate he's actually just allowing um flows to arise and to appear and and similarities and connections to make sense in a broader mm -hmm. sense it's pretty cool mm -hmm. right yeah. it's it's the patterning the, the the recognition of patterns but you need to be recognizing a pattern uh, patterns among accurate data. Yeah, yeah. That's the link back to the critical thinking. And again, back to what we put in our, you know, what we put in our mind. And, you know, we had talked, you had mentioned, uh, I think it was perhaps on the first show, you had mentioned that the Navy was doing, uh, na the Navy was doing, um, into, they were training training, uh, the armed forces were training soldiers, uh, in intuition to help them develop the, their intuition muscle and realizing mm -hmm. that it was, it played a part in saving lives and in successful tactics. And I did a little bit of research in that. And it was really, um, this, this gentleman who wasn't really on guard and out of the corner of his eye or, or just in passing, he saw somebody put, he saw somebody put a, a backpack down and he saw them walk away and he could sense that they were walking away a little too fast and they were distancing themselves and wanted nothing to do with this backpack. And with, and all of a sudden the pattern just said to him, danger, 
this this mm-hmm. is something is wrong. And he chased the guy who went back. He cleared out this building and sure enough, it blew up and he saved lives. And and he says that he actually wasn't using his mind, that it was intuitive. And so it was sort of happening in the background. But it made me think of what this conversation, which has a lot to do with that data was there. You know, the data of what do you put bombs in? What does you know, what does this scenario look like? That data had to be there in order for his intuition to arise, wouldn't you say? Yes, and I I can think of other things that he may have picked up unconsciously, like how heavy is a backpack usually? Right. With a bomb in it, it's probably a little heavier. So as it was being lowered to the ground, you would pick up that nuance. You could pick up yes. that nuance of weight, you know, and then and then his moving away. It's it it is interesting that we can trace back. Uh, when we have an intuitive sense, we can often trace back uh, small signals that we were picking up, but sometimes it's not as clear. Yeah. Yeah. As in, where did that come from? You mean? (laughs) Yes. As in, where did that come from? And that's why it's so important that, that we not uh, drowned out the intuitive hunch with the critical analysis right or with emotions you know you can imagine if you're uh it it, for instance if you are feeling vengeful or angry or scared you know it would really would Mm -hmm. limit your capacity to notice the details even if they're subconscious to really allow yourself to immerse in a situation long enough that some pattern may arise right we might nip it in the bud or, or cut it short well, actually, you know, when we are angry with someone or afraid of someone, we often misinterpret right. <clears throat> actions, right? Yeah, um, so. And so that's inaccurate, an inaccurate interpretation of the data that's in front of us, a yes. lack of critical thinking. Indeed. Dorothy, we're already at another break. We're going to, okay. we're going to, Listen to some messages and we'll be right back. The knowledge book currently studied in 39 countries and 15 languages around the world accelerates our evolution, takes us out of depression, offers universal truths, protects us and makes us stronger, both spiritually and physically. So if you are interested in The Knowledge Book, visit usa.thenowledgebook.net and tune in to The Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Amber Teal, founder of The Healthy Edge, is bringing you the hit show Healthy Edge Radio, living with power, passion, and purpose. Amber provides the support and tools necessary for you to finally release the weight and emotions that are hidden beneath the weight. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information on how you can take the next step with Amber, visit GetTheHealthyEdge.com. Isn't it time to put your health first, to give yourself the gift of whole body wellness? What if embracing unconditional love and self-care was the first step to wellness? Could you honor that for yourself? My name is Audrey Michelle, host of Rewired Life Radio and the author of Rewired Life, A Journey to Untangle Chronic Pain and Endometriosis. In my book, I share how I healed from 17 years of chronic pain and disease. Get your signed copy at audreymichelle.com slash book, spelled M-I-C-H-E-L dot com slash book. Tune in to the Psychic Professors Show, The Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio. Featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship, this hit call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net. Tune in each Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. 
Karen Fenn is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living, LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the com. Welcome back, listeners, to Spirit Fire Radio. My co-host, Dr. Dorothy Riddle, and I are spending the whole month talking about intuition and the part it plays in incorporating spirituality into our everyday lives and, and purposeful living, right, Dorothy? We say that quite a bit on this show. Mm-hmm. And I can see how, uh, as we talk about critical thinking, that it really is about solutions. You know, we're, we were just talking about uh, the armed services and uh and ways in which they're trying to train soldiers to be intuitive. And you can see that, that it, what they're trying to do is, is uh, it's preemptive. I don't love that word. I, we always think of it as like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't love that word, but in a sense, yes, it's preemptive. It's, it's solution based, it's problem solving. And so you can see how, what we're really trying to do is at the end of the day, just create a better world. You know, we're really trying to um, use intuition to find a way that allows us all um, to live, you know, uh, a, a, a life that, that is, uh, just that much more aligned, you know, uh, with, with our greatest potential, which is means uh, ease, right? That That's right. I, I just wanted to comment a, a little bit more on the military because I, I have to say that when I came across the references to the research that the military was doing on intuition it seemed counterintuitive it, yeah. you know, that the military would be would be focused that way. But the incident that you described, Steve, is is one of many that they give of, of recognizing that uh, part of what was saving lives in places like Afghanistan or Iraq was people acting on a hunch, on an intuition. So they're trying to see how they can train that in and and. The way they talk about it, I think, is helpful to us. They talk about it as sense making. You know that that there's there's all of this discrete data out there, but recognizing a pattern, making sense of what's going on, and learning to do that unconsciously or subconsciously, because that's a lot of what the intuition is about, is matching what you're observing in the environment uh, to what to a pattern that you already know that already has meaning for you or being able to look at, at what's going on and see a pattern in it. And all of this happening in a split second, right? Not, not through long, long analyses, but just being able to on the spot uh, sense that and then trust that sense. So it's both the sensing and the trusting that is so critical. Well, Dorothy, you know, I, I know next week we're going to, we're going to talk a, a bit about um, ways to generate, you know, ways to, to generate intuition. And I hope we'll talk a bit about, um, about intuition and the difference between instinct and intuition and something being wrote just because we've done it all the time and sort of the difference between intuition and sort of just default, you know, and mm-hmm. that's, I suppose, where critical thinking comes in uh, because it takes effort to really, um, to really, uh, you know, make, make sense of it and to, mm-hmm. uh, to contemplate and ponder and really suss it out. Um, we want to make sure, right, that, that, it's not confused with just we've got this data in our mind and we will automatically default because the data is there and and in a sense confusing it with being rote. You, you know where I see where I'm going with that? Well, I think you're talking about being able to function mindlessly, <laughs> being able to 
drive home without being aware of the drive. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. It's not so much level. intuition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But when we're talking about intuition, we're you know, one of the reasons why we link this to risk taking is it is about new situations, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Not just rote situations. And what's re- been really interesting to me in researching for this show is uh, to read interviews with professional poker players or people who play chess at a, an international, you know, internationally competitive level. Uh, and they all talk about using intuition in terms of deciding to take risks because mm. part of their success is uh, being able to operate in a manner that is not predictable or to take advantage of, you know, you can, you can have kind of ground rules for this is the way you should behave, this is the choice you should make in this situation. And their success is on knowing when not to follow those, you know, when to follow a, a hunch instead. Mm. Right. And I mean, you, you can imagine the vast amount of data that their brain is processing, right? How many different mm-hmm. options there are, which is the right one. You'd have to rely on intuition or it would take days before you'd make a move, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then it really does become about just being in the flow. I can imagine with a with a poker player or a, or a chess player that um, it is really just where is this game going and what what feels right next. And knowing that that data is in your brain, there must be something to that mm-hmm. of all of the various uh, all of the various possibilities. I think there's an overlap also between intuition and imagination. I'm thinking of the, you know, in in relation to risk taking, a, a different type of approach. The, the uh, as if uh, approach. Which at least I use this uh, a lot. Where if I'm faced with a uh, a challenging situation where I need to make a decision, um, and I don't I don't have to make it instantly, but I have to make it soon what I'll do is I will imagine that I have made one choice and then I live as if that is the choice yeah. and I feel, see how that feels. And then I make a different choice and I live with that for a little bit and see how that feels. And then I'm able to make the best possible decision in the situation. Yes. It's like your sort of compass, your, your, guidance system comes out and says, ah, this is right. This feels right. It reminds Mm -hmm. me a bit of the law of attraction where you, you've got a desired outcome, even if it seems risky and wild, you know, ah, this is my new future. You see it as it is, as if it is, it has just happened. And then it's a matter of allowing that outcome to come to you. And with each step and each unfolding of each moment, you have to almost in a sense, sense, use your intuition to guide you toward that reality. And I sort of love that way of, of leading life because it's optimistic in that way. There's so many potentials, there's so many options, and I just need to follow my gut to find the right one in each and every moment. And each and every moment stays new and it keeps you flexible. Mm-hmm. It's true. Lovely. Dorothy, we're at the end of the show. It's been a- uh, Oh my goodness. It's been really wonderful. I, I've I've learned a lot. You know, listeners, I hope you have too. I I have really learned a lot about critical thinking, and I uh, really appreciate that. So, uh, wonderful conversation, Dorothy. As always, uh, I feel the same way, Steve. It has so, been a pleasure. Yes, and thank so, you for joining us, listeners. Thank you for joining us. Indeed. And, and if you'd like to uh, listen to some past shows, uh, wonderful topics we've been covering all year long, uh, go to spiritfireradio.com or to Transformation Talk Radio and look for Spirit Fire Radio. So next week, Dorothy, we are going to talk about ways to uh, you know, flex that intuition muscle to, to make intuition a bit more readily available in your life. So that's going to be a wonderful show, and I look forward to it. 
Until and it'll the- be very timely just before the new year. <laughs> yes. What? So that that you can use your intuition to come up with a New Year's resolution, right? <laughs> That's, That's good right. as you well. <laughs> Beautiful. Thanks much, Dorothy and listeners. We will see you next week. Thank you for listening to Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern for your weekly guide to purposeful living and practical spirituality. Join hosts Steve Kramer and Dorothy Riddle as they shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in your everyday life. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. To learn more, visit spiritfireradio.com. 